Rise of the Beasts was a fun movie. It wasn't perfect, and upon rewatch, there were some glaring flaws. But it was still a fun movie. Despite the fanboy in me really wishing Gary Chalk had been cast as Optimus Primal, just so I could hear him and Peter Cullen talk to each other on screen, I will admit that Ron Perlman did a good job. And I joined my daughter in losing our collective minds when I heard him tell Cheetor and Rhinox to maximize. So, naturally, I was interested in getting a figure to represent one of the greatest leaders in Cybertronian history from his big screen debut. Studio series Rise of the Beasts Optimus Primal is a wonderful figure, with one major flaw. It's very boring in the color department. It's not the toy's fault, it's just trying to be screen accurate. But damn, this thing could do with a pop of color. Somewhere. In Beast Mode, Optimus Primal is, as he has almost always been, a gigantic gorilla. But not one to scale, and not one that looks wholly organic on the outside. While most people would consider or expect this to be a big screen representation of Season 1 Optimus Primal, it's actually more in line with the Transmetal, or even, dare I say it, Beast Machines Primal. And I'm very okay with that. The beautiful melding of organic and technological sides in both his modes is fantastic. There is so much detail on this figure that just blows my mind. In Beast Mode, we see lots of sculpted fur parts, haphazardly concealing robot bits underneath. Kind of like the original toy that couldn't quite conceal everything. Except this time, it feels intentional, embracing this mode as a techno-organic gorilla. It's really an intriguing approach, and honestly, kind of solves the problem of scale between Maximals and Autobots for the film. The Beast head sculpt is stunning in this mode, with an articulated jaw that's coupled with fantastic arm articulation, allowing for some great poses to really show off the power of his chosen alternate form. Maximizing Optimus Primal is an interesting affair. It's almost over-engineered, particularly in the hands. This part can be a bit finicky, trying to get all the panels lined up properly. Primal's robot mode is, like the Beast mode, a fantastically sculpted tribute to a black and white movie. There's nothing wrong with it per se. I just really wish it had some color. At first, I wanted to see his traditional season one red, white, and blue colors pop out. But then someone made a comment on my top 10 that it would look cool in Beast Machine's colors and holy crap, I would absolutely buy that. Primal can pose in pretty much any way you could want. Though, for some reason, the robot head is restricted. I really don't know why, but it still looks fantastic. I just wish it moved more. One of the added bonuses of this leader class release is the included accessories. You get Optimus Prime's axe from the movie. A nice touch for anyone that was actually able to find Studio Series Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime. You also get a Transwarp key. Yay? His signature swords, which I have to say look fantastic. I love that they really didn't change much for the small screen to the silver one, because they were and are a very badass design. But the best accessory is the articulated chain. I love this thing. It can be used in so many cool ways, not only with Primal, but it also fixes what's missing from Battle Trap and allows you to really get into reenacting some of the best scenes from the movie with these toys. Overall, I really like this figure. Optimus Primal was easily one of the best things about the movie, but also one of the best characters in Transformers, and this figure might be one of my favorites of him. I mean, the Transmetal design is still the best because Surf Monkey, but this is up there for me. Another flesh creature that watches without subscribing! Seriously, it's so easy an Autobot could do it! <laughs>